In today's shorty episode, I'm addressing a question that many parents with newborns ask me. Should you wake your baby at night to feed them? Hi, I'm Allison Edgity, a pediatric sleep and wellness coach and a mom of two. I love to help parents find solutions. This is How Long Till Bedtime. lot of conflicting advice out there on whether or not it's a good idea and or necessary to wake newborns up during the night to feed them. I don't think there is one right answer for this question because there are a variety of factors that can come into play. Is your baby gaining weight? And if you're breastfeeding, is the practice of nursing going well and is your supply in a good place? The advice I'm gonna share today is for those who feel comfortable with their milk supply or they are bottle feeding, and for parents who have a goal of doing whatever they can to encourage their baby to naturally sleep for longer stretches as early as possible. If that's you, here is my simple answer. If your baby was born full term and there are no health concerns, I recommend no longer waking your baby at night to feed them once they are two weeks old or once they have surpassed their birth weight and they're gaining weight nicely. Now, of course, you wanna talk to your child's pediatrician before you actually make this move. I had this conversation with our pediatrician before Ainsley was even born because I knew I wanted to do things differently than I did with my first, who I continued to wake and feed per some instructions I read in a book. And so we had sign off from her that assuming she was doing well at birth, that she was gaining weight and got past her birth weight, that we were going to drop that practice of waking her up during the night to feed her. Everything went smoothly, and we actually stopped waking her up to feed her before she turned two weeks, and she was sleeping through the night at eight weeks. Now, don't get me wrong. There are many babies who are not ready to sleep through the night at eight weeks, but I have no doubt that not waking Ainsley helped us get those full nights of sleep so quickly. So let's talk about that a little more, and I want to help you understand why that would be the case. In those early months, babies are slowly starting to develop a sleep rhythm. As that rhythm develops, waking your baby to feed them can cause the waking to actually become part of their rhythm. By waiting to feed them when they naturally wake up, you're encouraging those night stretches to naturally lengthen as your baby becomes ready to sleep longer without night feedings. Another reason to not continue waking your baby to feed them at night is because it can actually cause more wakings throughout the night. Once we have that initial night waking, whether it's natural or because your baby was woken up by you for the feeding, the chance of more fragmented sleep afterwards is significantly higher. While it won't always play out this way, if I can write the script for how babies naturally reach full nights of sleep, that initial stretch of sleep at the beginning of the night will just start to lengthen and it will continue to lengthen until we bump the night feedings right out the end. So if helping your baby learn to naturally sleep for longer stretches at night is your goal, talk to your pediatrician about your baby's readiness to be able to sleep for as long as their body will let them sleep at night. And if you decide to give this a try, I recommend that you don't go any longer than three hours between daytime feedings because that's another way that you're going to set your baby up to get enough calories and nutrition during the day to allow them to start to sleep those longer stretches at night. And if you're wondering about my thoughts on the Dream Feed, I actually do think that the Dream Feed can be helpful during the first 12 weeks, but I'm not such a huge fan of them after that. 
I talk more about the dream feed in episode 10. So if you want to learn more about that, be sure to check out that episode. And if you have a baby who is 12 weeks or younger, and you're interested in learning more about how I approach gently guiding your baby to full nights of sleep and those hour plus long naps in their crib, be sure to check out my free class, Five Common Mistakes That Can Undermine Your Newborn Sleep. I'll link to it in the show notes. And be sure to come back next week to hear the conversation I had with my guest, Stacey Olson, all about mom guilt, setting boundaries, and creating balance in your life. There are so many great takeaways in this episode. All right, bye for now. Thank you for listening to How Long Till Bedtime. To learn how we can work together to improve your child's sleep, please visit sleepandwellnesscoach.com.